We know we can make good use of hydrogen, it's just production that causes headaches. But what if we could use ordinary household waste to create that crucial, lightest element of all? London buses running on London garbage. Boson Energy think they've worked it out and they're joining me in Davos to talk me through it. Okay, Jan, great to talk to you. First of all, I know we're going to be talking about hydrogen, but give me an idea about how important hydrogen can be to our daily lives. It will eliminate all emissions. It will achieve climate mitigation if we can comply to the production of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a brilliant carrier. You can use hydrogen in any energy application you wish. Like, for example? Um, producing electricity stationary, producing uh, electricity for battery cars, use hydrogen on board, on cars, marine, all sectors. So why don't we use it more often? Uh, it's an ecosystem, an infrastructure. You need to adapt so many parts of the society. You cannot in integrate it just like that because there, most of the infrastructure is, need to be part of this transition generation, distribution, uh, compliances, everything around us needs to be adjusted. But Boson, you're in the generation game. We are in the generation game. So we produce the hydrogen locally with flexibility to the off-takers. If you want to use it for thermal applications, replace natural gas. If you want to speed charge your car without grid connection, or if you want to use the hydrogen on board on a bus or a car or a truck. So how does Boson produce hydrogen? We harvest hydrogen from materials like waste. And instead of having uh, toxic emissions, CO2 emissions, uh, ash that contaminates uh, land or water, we have three defined outputs, the hydrogen for energy use, the CO2 for use or storage, or an inert material that we can use for construction. So you produce from burning waste at very high temperatures, you can produce hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and then a kind of byproduct. You want to come away, when you create hydrogen, you want to come away from burning. You want to uh, increase the temperature so the molecules are free, and then you collect the molecules, and then you can choose what you do with that molecule, in this case, the hydrogen. And when you burn that, you only have emissions of water. Or if you want to produce elect electricity directly, emissions water, nothing else. Well, show me the byproduct that you get from your process. So when, when you have waste, waste have toxic materials inside. You don't want that to be exposed to land, water. You want to once and for all end of life, so you vitrify the metals and the minerals. We have metals and minerals in everything in our normal life. But when it's condensed, it, can poss it possesses a to toxic risk. But if we process it correctly, it's going to be safe and you can replace other kind of filling materials or construction materials. So you have a circularity not only by picking up the useful energy carrying hydrogen, but you also have a uh, circularity in the, what normally would be in the toxic material, and you can replace other commodities. And this is what you call a local solution. You produce it near to or in the same community where the waste is produced. It's beautiful. We produce waste. We need energy, we need construction material, we need CO2, if you look at Holland, greenhouses. And if we can take something which has a negative value and put it into work locally, we reduce stress, we have lower cost, and definitely we can, we can comply to climate mitigation easier. So, so there's benefits, 360 benefits. Well, it's a carbon zero process, right? Uh, one could even stress it and say carbon negative process. So you can offset other things. As we collect the CO2 as a byproduct in the process when we produce hydrogen, we will have a negative CO2 footprint on the hydrogen. So, for example, in a city, London buses running on waste produced by Londoners? Yeah. Easy. So is that like a, a, like a miracle? No, definitely not. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, we, we just follow first principle when it comes to science and solutions. And we don't, we don't twiddle around with, uh, with uh, engineering or science. Yeah? We just look at things as they are. And the building block of us are molecules. So if we can take the waste, which is local existing, put it into work, 
reduce stress. So that should be extremely popular process with the people who have a waste disposal problem. Of course. It's, um, it's not for Europe or US, it's for everyone in the world. And, it, uh, and uh, the, the, the funny thing is when, when you look at waste and you put it into a uh, water stressed environment, you can take one ton of waste, we produce uh, a circularity in the process, clean carrier hydrogen, a clean residue, but when you do electricity locally from a stationary fuel cell, you get absolutely clean water. So waste not treated in an, any environment where you have water stress at the same time and a double water stress if you let the waste contaminate the ecosystem. But if you process correctly, you avoid stressing the water reservoirs, but you produce local clean chemical water for use. So what are the Boson strategies for upscaling this? Work with the global companies so we can standardize. So together with existing companies uh, have a, a, as possible quick rollout and market. We, you know, we, we can control part of our destiny, yeah? uh, but we need to work with other individuals, companies, uh, policy makers. So there's no limit. But disruptive technology is often a, a technology of benefit. It's just a question of getting the momentum Correct. to put it into the system. I mean, where, where do governments say in Europe or, or North America stand so far on this, on this process? Um, uh, you, you know, we, we technology people, we tend to see where the, the solutions should fit in the future. But so you have a technology challenge to convince the, the, the stakeholders. Um, but, so you have technology challenges and also communication challenges and adapting challenges for the various stakeholders. And that takes time. So. But this is what the true version, a true example of the circular economy, isn't it? Yes, sir. So is it frustrating for you being the architect, the engineer behind this kind of process and having to persuade and push and cajole? Not, not really. That's part of the challenge. So there are no shortcuts. So education, sharing information, um, no, um, it's, uh, it's part of the, it's actually quite motivating. And I think uh, all of us in the team share that as well. And what's your vision of a, a hydrogen producing future for the world or even for the local area? My, my, my vision is more, uh, of course we have challenges in Europe and in sort of uh, developed countries, but if you look at uh, the emerging markets, enormous possibilities. We have local available, various streams that can uh, be put into useful work for, for, for the society. Quality of life and prosperity. And you can take one country, India, tremendous opportunities, not only for quality of the individual, financially, energy security. So when you look at it top down from a, for a country, it has a significant impact on the energy security if you're dependent on energy as importing it. And where you have local resources, it's not 5-10% replacement, it can be up to 50-60% of what you normally would import as fossil fuels. Are you optimistic? Of course. It is going to happen. Not only us, uh, colleagues in the industry, competitors, uh, 10, 15 years, definitely <laughs> significant impact. Together with other technologies, of course, yeah? it's not silver bullet here. Yeah, and thanks very much indeed. Thanks.